Greetings and welcome to the introduction to physical science. In this lecture, we are going to look at electric circuits and primarily looking at how the current voltage and resistances work in different types of circuits, including series and parallel circuits. So let's go ahead and get started here. And what we want to look at is that there are generally two types of circuits that we're going to be con concerned with. And a circuit will generally have multiple components, what, which are resistors. Now they could be various things from actual resistors to light bulbs or other sources, but something that actually consumes the that uses the energy. So that's where the energy drops across and where we'll see something occurring. And there are two basic combinations. At the top we have series where everything is in one line. And at the bottom we have parallel where they are all connected across each other but not directly connected to each other. So we will look at examples of both series and parallel circuits and how the different resistors combine because the resistances combine differently up here than they do down here. So let's go ahead and start off looking at series resistors. And when we have resistors in series, it means that the current must flow through each resistor in turn. So it has to flow through the first resistor here in order to get to the second resistor. And it has to flow through both of those in order to get to the third resistor. And it has to have flown through all three in order to get back where it started. Now. In this case, that means the current is the same through each of these resistors. Whatever the current is in this circuit is the same. So the current passing through R1 is the same as the current passing through R2 is the same as the current passing through R3. So we know that V1 equals IR1, V2 equals IR2, and so on. So we could have as many resistors as we want in this. Now, the total resistance we call R sub s is the sum of the individual resistances. So the total resistance in this case of three resistors is R1 plus R2 plus R3. And that gives us a net circuit that we see on the right here, where we have a voltage source a single net resistor with the total resistance equivalent to the sum of those three resistors and then some current traveling through it. So we can then simplify so we can now calculate what the current is and figure out what the voltage and everything are across the circuit. So now we were able to look at current voltage and resistance among the entire circuit. So let's go ahead and look at an example of how we might do a series circuit. So what we have is here is an example using our diagram from before. Now we have a battery which is 12 volts applied through three resistances which are in series where we have one that is one ohm, one that is six ohms and one that is 13 ohms. And we want to look for the total resistance, the current and the total power dissipated. So remember current is just going to be one current for the entire circuit. So as we want to go ahead and start on this what we can figure out is first of all what do we know. So in this case we know that the voltage is 12 volts. That's the total voltage that is being applied to the circuit. The first resistor is 1 ohm. The second is 6 ohms and the third is 13 ohms. So now we know that our total resistance is just the sum of these three. So the total resistance is equal to 1 ohm plus 6 ohms plus 13 ohms or 20 ohms. And now that we know that now we can find the current. So we found the first part. This is actually the first part of our problem. We found the total resistance. The current now passing through that is the voltage that we already know divided by the total resistance. So we're just using Ohm's law here. We know that the voltage drop is 12 volts. 
we know that the resistance is 20 ohms and that would give us a current of 0 0.600 amps. And remember that is the current through each of those resistors. So each of those resistors will have 0.6 amps passing through it. You cannot have a dis differing current passing through each because the current has to pass through each of these in turn and end up back at the voltage source where it started. Now if you want to find the power, the power is equal to the current times the voltage. So now we know the current, we know the voltage, and we now know that the total power dissipated is 7.2 watts. So once we've simplified the resistance and combined it into a total resistance, we can then solve through and find the current and the power rather easily. Now we can also uh, continuing the example, let's go ahead and look at another one because now we're looking at the same problem we just finished. These are the same three resistors we had in the previous problem. But now we want to find the voltage drop again across each resistor. Remember the current is the same. But since we know from Ohm's law that the voltage equals the current times the resistance, that means that if the currents are all the same if the resistance changes then the voltage must change. So the voltage drop will be different across each of these and we can go ahead and calculate that. So what we have we know for V1 that V1 is I times R1 and the current which is the same for each of these is 0.6 amps. The first resistance is 1 ohm which gives us 0.6 volts. We can do the same thing for the second and find 3.6 volts and for the third and find 7.8 volts. Now how do we check our answers and make sure they're reasonable? Well we know that the total voltage was 12 volts. So if we add up these three and we don't get 12 volts we know that we did something wrong along the way. However, we find if we add 7.8, 3.6, and 0.6, we do indeed get 12 volts, meaning that our answer does make sense. So it's a good quick check when you're doing these. The voltage does need to add up to the total voltage at the end. So those are that's circuits in series. How about circuits in parallel? How do they work? Well, in a parallel circuit, now the current is split. So the current comes out of the voltage source and at each junction it splits. So some goes this way and some goes that way. And then at the next junction again some goes this way and some goes down through this resistor. So the currents will not be the same as they were as they were in the series example. What will be the same is the voltage. So the voltage drop across R1 is the same as the voltage drop across R2 and that's the same as the voltage drop across R3. So in this case it's the voltage that will remain the same and the current that will be different for each resistor. Now to find the total resistance it is the sum of the inverse of each resistance. So 1 over the total resistance is equal to 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3 and so on. Note that this means that the total resistance will be less than the individual resistances. So if the lowest resistance is 1 ohm your total resistance will actually be less than 1 ohm. And that's quite different from resistors in, seri in series as well. So let's go ahead and look at an example of this. And our example shows again a battery of 12 volts ap applied to three resistors in parallel. And you'll note that they're the same three resistors we looked at previously, 1 ohm, 6 ohms, and 13 ohms. And now we're again looking for the total resistance, current, and total power. So let's go ahead and look at these and then we will uh, summarize a little bit as to what else we can do here. So. Let's put up what we know and we know that the voltage is 12 volts and we know the three resistances 1 ohm, 6 ohms and 13 ohms. So our first thing to do is to reduce the circuit to a simpler version that still has the same total resistance. So 1 over the total resistance is 1 over the first resistance plus 1 over the second plus 1 over the third. 
And if we put our values in, that is equal to 1 over 1 ohm plus 1 over 6 ohms plus 1 over 13 ohms. And that would be that 1 over the resistance is equal to 1 plus 0.167 plus 0 0.0769 1 over ohms. And if we add those up, we find out that 1 over the resistance is equal to 1.2439 uh, 1 over ohms, or that the res net resistance, the total resistance is 0 0.804 ohms. So do note that that is actually lower than the resistance for any of the individual resistors. So now we found what we wanted first, and that is the total resistance of this circuit. Now that we found that we can find the other things that we're looking for again put our numbers up here that we know and we know the total resistance that we found and now we can find the current. The current is equal to the voltage which we know that was 12 volts divided by the total resistance right here. So 12 volts divided by 0 0.804 ohms is equal to 14.9 amps. Now remember that current that's the total current coming here. We're going to have to look for individual currents in each part of this because in, in a parallel circuit the currents are not going to be the same. They are going to be different in each case because different amounts of current will flow through each of the three resistors. So we can also found we found the current we've got to find the power power is equal to current times voltage. Well we just found the current we know the voltage here as 12 volts and we can find out that the power in the circuit is 179 watts. So that finishes our first version of the problem but let's go ahead and do something else here because we still have another thing to find now we want to find the current through each resistor. When it was para when it was in series, we could find the voltage across each resistor. We know that the voltage is the same across each of these resistors, but the current is going to be different. So we put up our numbers that we know already there. And to find the first current, it's the voltage, which is 12 volts, divided by the first resistance of 1 ohm. And that gives us a total of 12 amps. Now we can do the same thing for the second and find 2 amps and for the third and find 0.92 amps. So we've been able to split this up that 12 amps goes through I1, 2 amps through I2 and 0.92 amps through I3. And they are different because of the resistances. If you have a higher amount of resistance, less current is going to be able to flow through that junction. So most of the current is going to go through the path of least resistance there, R1. However, at least some current will travel through each of the other two parts of the circuit. And if we add these up, we find that we can add 12 amps plus 2 amps plus 0.92 amps and get the 14.92 amps that we found for the current in the previous part of the problem. And again, that has to be the same. The total current has to be exactly the same regardless of how it's split up. So it splits into three, but those three have to add up to the same total. And therefore, it's a good check on your work when you're doing a problem like this to be able to verify that the total current does end up being the same. So now we want to look at something maybe a little bit more complicated because most circuits are going to be more complex, which will have both series and parallel components. And we still have to reduce these to a single equivalent resistance to be able to solve the circuit. So for example, we look at a very complicated circuit here on the left. And what we can do is combine this. We see that we have a set of parallel circuits, a parallel circuit here and a second one here. We can combine those to get an equivalent resistance here and here for those parallel circuits. And now we have these two combined. These two are in series together. The current has to pass through both of them completely. So we now can combine these two into this single resistor. And now again, we have parallel to, to, to in parallel. And we can combine that. 
And then finally, we have the last two in series, and we can combine those to find the total resistance of the entire series given the equivalent resistance. So we can go ahead and look at an example of how this works, but it's really a way of reducing the entire circuit to just a single resistor. So let's look at our example. Let's not go quite as crazy with the one we saw there. Let's do a little something a little bit simpler. And what we want to look at is a circuit that has a parallel component here and a thin and which will then reduce to a series component. So we want to find the voltage drop across R1, the current through R2, and the power dissipated by R2. Now we could look for all of the different parts. Those are the only three portions we're actually looking for in this. So let's go ahead and put down what we know here. And what we know, first of all, we have to reduce the circuit. So the first thing to look at would be this parallel portion here. And remember that the equivalent resistance here is equal to 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3 or 1 over 6 ohms plus 1 over 13 ohms. Well, 1 over the total resistance then is 0.2436 1 over ohms or the equivalent resistance for that portion of the circuit is 4.11 ohms. Now remember, we're not done. That's the equivalent resistance for this portion. But now we have that resistor in series with this resistor. So we have to continue to reduce the circuit. So now the total resistance is the resistance of R1 plus the net resistance that we found before. So we take R1 and we add this resistance. As they're in series, we add them directly. And we get a total equivalent resistance for this circuit for these three resistors, these two in parallel, then this one in series with the combination of 5.11 ohms. So now that we found that equivalent resistance, we can go ahead and calculate the current, the voltage drop current and power that we're looking for. So we're looking at the uh, First, we're looking at the voltage drop, and sorry, current. First, we're looking at the current, and the current is equal to voltage divided by the total resistance. So the total current going into the circuit is 12 volts divided by 5.11 ohms, which is 2.35 amps. So that is the total current, but we're looking for the current through R2. So we have to look at this is going to split up. So we know that V1 is equal to I, the current that we just calculated, times resistance. And therefore, the voltage across I of V1 is 2.35 volts. So this is actually the first thing we were looking for, the voltage drop across R1. We knew the resistance. And we had just calculated the current, giving us the voltage drop across this first resistor. Now remember that leaves us as the remainder at what will be the voltage drop across the second resistor. So the voltage drop across those two resistors in parallel is going to be the difference of the 12 volt total voltage minus the 2.35 volts from right here or 9.65 volts. So we now know that the voltage drop across R2 and R3 is 9.65 volts and that will allow us to calculate the current and the power dissipated. So we can do those. First the current I2 is equal to the voltage across that resistor divided by that resistance. In this case 9.65 volts divided by 6 ohms or 1.61 amps. And the last thing we wanted to look at was the power. Well, remember power equals I squared times R. I, we just figured out, is 1.61 amps. The resistance is 0.6 ohms. And if we square the current and multiply it by the resistance, we will find that it is 15.5 watts. And similarly, we could also look for things like the power across R1 or the power across R2. And we could look for the current through R2 as well. Now, if we add up the current for R1, or sorry, for R2 and R3, that must match the current for R1. 
because the same current that flows through here is split two ways. So whatever goes this way, the remainder of it has to go this way. So sometimes once you've found one current, you just have to subtract to find the second current. You don't actually have to go through the same calculation that you did. So let's go ahead and look a little bit about uh, problem solving strategies for this. So what do we do first? Well, if you're not given one, draw yourself a circuit diagram. Label the resistors, label the voltage sources. This helps you identify everything you know. If you know a current, label that. Label everything that you know. Identify what you're looking for. And then you want to look. Do you have just series resistors, just parallel resistors? Or do you have a combination of both that you have to do? And then you want to reduce the problem into steps. You're not going to be able to solve everything all at once. Sometimes you have to find the current first in order to determine the power or to determine something some other part of it. And you want to look at again how you want to handle the series and the parallel components. And then you do want to check to make sure your answers are reasonable. So if currents do not add up correctly, something might be wrong. If voltages do not add up uh, the way they're supposed to for series or parallel circuits, then you may want to relook at what you did. So let's go ahead and finish up here. So we looked at electric circuits and how they can involve resistors in a number of different things in series, in parallel, or in a combination of these two with multiple resistors. Resistors in series will add directly. So R1 plus R2 plus R3 and so on, depending on the number of resistors that we have. Resistors in parallel will add inversely. So you add 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3 and so on. You could have more and more resistors. You add as many as you need to. And then finally we looked at combination circuits which are more complex and include both series and parallel components. So that concludes this lecture on electric circuits. We'll be back again next time for another topic in physical science. So until then, have a great day everyone, and I will see you in class.